Now let's get into some function details. And before creating our own functions, we want to discuss how we could broadly classify functions as falling into one of two categories. First of all, there are void functions. In contrast to void functions, there are non-void functions. But in this video, we'll talk mostly about void functions and something else known as none. And what makes a void function a void function? Well, a void function doesn't return anything. And we could leave the statement pretty much at that, but I'll qualify this and say it doesn't return anything meaningful. And we'll see why in a bit. Now, why would we use a function that doesn't return anything? Well, a void function is used for its side effects. We mentioned side effects in the last video. We'll see a little bit more of that in this video. In contrast to a void function is a non-void function. And what makes a non-void function non-void? Well, it returns something in something meaningful. The print function is an example of a void function. And note that it generates output, but it doesn't really return anything useful. So let's consider this. Let's assign to the variable x whatever print returns when it's given the string argument of 42. So we see the output of 42. Some output showed up to the screen, but don't confuse that with what was assigned to the name or identifier x. So what is x now? In the interactive environment, we can type the variable name on a line and just hit return and see its value. And oh, I hit return, and we don't see anything. The variables defined, I haven't gotten an error. For example, if I put the variable y and just hit return, well, that hasn't been defined yet. But x was defined, but it looks like it doesn't have any value. Let's try this. Let's say print function. Why don't you print what x is? And now we get none. This basically means that x isn't associated with anything meaningful. In some sense, its value doesn't exist because the print function didn't return anything useful. So we should note that the print function is a void function. In other words, it returns none. So I said before that void functions don't return anything, but really it's they don't return anything meaningful. And none is kind of saying, I don't return anything. But it's out there. It's captured by anything that is assigned what the function returns. Let's try and illustrate this a little bit further, albeit in a slightly confusing way. And what we'll try here is to have the print function tell us what the print function returns. So we know we can nest functions. Let's use the print function and as its argument have a print function and as the argument of that one have maybe 42. So hitting return now, we see 42, which is the output of that innermost print function. That's the side effect of calling that function. Now, the outer print function said, I am going to print whatever that inner print function returned to me, gave back to me. But it returned essentially nothing. It returned none. And that's the second line of output that we see there. We've previously used the type function to find out what type is associated with variables. For example, a variable might be a string or an integer or a float. How about this variable x? What is it now? So let's check that out. We'll provide x as an argument for the type function. And it says x is a none type. So if a variable is none, it will have a type of none type. We can't really do anything useful with none or a variable that's none. And to help illustrate that, let's try to use x in an arithmetic expression. Let's just say we want to take x plus 1. And hitting return, we get this exception. It says 
there's a type error, unsupported operands for addition. One other thing to note is that none is a keyword, and to illustrate that, let's assign to the variable y, which we previously showed was undefined, none. And notice that idle gives us some highlighting of none, recognizing that it's a keyword. That's not the string none, that is simply the keyword none. That worked just fine. And if we try to print y now, we see it's none. If we take y and try and multiply it by 2, of course we get an error because we can't multiply none by 2. We can't really use none at all. At this point, it isn't clear why you'd ever want to assign a variable a value of none, but it does have its uses, but we won't get into those here. The important thing to keep in mind is that void functions return none, and that's essentially equivalent to not returning anything. And in the next video, we'll consider non-void functions.